Hi, my name is Susan Ramos and I'm one of the naturalists with the East Bay Regional Park District. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite kinds of birds, shorebirds. And at first glance, they might be overwhelming. Their sheer numbers and the gray and brown colors might be confusing, but they're much easier to identify than the little brown birds that disappear into the bushes. So today we're going to learn a few tips and tricks on identifying them. And we're going to start with the larger shorebirds and make our way down to those small peeps. So join me today on Shorebird 101, Part 1. Let's start with some of our easily identified large shorebirds and go from there. The American avocet in fall and winter has black and white feathers covering its body. It's one of the only shorebirds where you can tell the difference between the male and the female. The male's bill curves upward slightly. The female's bill has a sharp up curve. American avocets are one of the few shorebirds that nests locally in Martin Luther King Jr. and Hayward shorelines. When avocets feed, they often sweep their bills back and forth in the water. But if the substrate is sandy, then they'll resort to pecking in the sand. So right now, we're looking at shorebirds that are in their winter plumage. That means their coloring is kind of gray and brown and drab, but the American avocet will turn a bright orangish red on its neck and head. It's pretty beautiful. The Bay Area is an extremely important site for the American avocets. 85 to 95 percent of all migrating and wintering avocets on the Pacific coast use the San Francisco Bay. Listen to the call of the American avocets. Another easily identified shorebird is the black neck stilt. These birds are a striking black and white with bright red legs. Their legs are so long in proportion to their bodies that they look like they're walking on stilts. In fact, black-necked stilts have the longest legs of any North American shorebird. Listen to the call of the black-necked stilts. Long-billed curlews can be easily identified by their long bill, their cinnamon-colored body, and their large size. Long-billed curlews use their long bills to reach deep into the mud to catch things like shrimp, worms, clams, and even crabs. Long-billed curlews can fly 35 to 50 miles per hour. In late March, long-billed curlews disappear, and instead of flying along the coast, they fly into the interior of North America to breed. Unlike other shorebirds, long-billed curlews will nest in prairie grasslands and catch insects to feed to their young. Listen to the call of this shorebird. The wimbrel is a bird you might mistake for a long-billed curlew. The wimbrel also has a bill that curves downward, but the bill is not as long. And look for the dark stripes on the head of the wimbrel to distinguish it from the long-billed curlew. Wimbrels are not as numerous in the San Francisco Bay, but they do migrate through. They're actually migrating from the farthest reaches of the Arctic to the farthest reaches of South America. Marbled godwits are cinnamon colored like curlews, but a bit smaller, and their two color bills curve upwards. The way I remember them is the marbled godwits have a bill that curves up towards God or heaven. Marbled godwits are about the same size as willets, which you will meet next. You can easily tell them apart, and they're often seen in large flocks. The San Francisco Bay has the second largest population of wintering marbled godwits in the world. Listen to the call of the marbled godwits. (laughs) 
Willets are another shorebird that are large. And they're very gray and brown, and they have a straight beak. They look rather plain, except when they fly. Then they show black and white underneath the wings. Willets are often seen alone or in mixed flocks with marbled godwits. Willets are named for its call, a loud, harsh, repeated, will, will, will it? Most shorebirds migrate north and south along the coast. Willets are another exception. They'll migrate east into the interior of North America for breeding. Yellow legs are easily identified by their bright yellow legs. There are two kinds of yellow legs, greater and lesser. Greater yellow legs have a longer bill relative to the size of their head. Not only is it longer, it's stouter and slightly upturned. It's also two-toned, black with a gray base, except during breeding, it's all black. Lesser yellow legs have a shorter bill. It's about the size of their head. It's thinner and straighter and uniformly dark. Another key difference between the greater and the lesser is their size. Greater yellow legs are about the size of a willet, whereas the lesser yellow legs, they're only 10 and a half inches. Greater yellow legs are much more common in the San Francisco Bay compared to the lesser yellow legs. In addition to their bright yellow legs, the other thing you'll notice about yellow legs is their call. It's panic-stricken and always loud. So thanks for joining me for Shorebird 101, part one, talking about the larger shorebirds. I encourage you to go out onto the San Francisco Bay and take a look at some of these amazing shorebirds. Now you have a few tips and tricks to be able to identify them.